Hey folks, welcome. It's Art Wolf, and I thought I'd never be able to bring you this amazing unboxing that you're going to see today. Fresh from its 1980 shrink wrap is Dallas, the television role-playing game. So I was fortunate enough to uh, to get this on eBay in the original shrink wrap, and it was not incredibly expensive. Had it been just a few dollars more, I would not, in fact, have bought it. Uh, but this is this is a true artifact of role playing game history here, and not exactly a fondly remembered one. Um, it is the licensed Dallas television role playing game, one of the very earliest, and certainly the fanciest. Uh, for its time, role-playing games that were licensed from uh, some kind of commercial property. Lorimar Productions, as it turns out, in this case. This is a James F. Dunnigan design, too. Graphic design by the legendary Redmond Simonson and ed editorial development by Robert J. Ryer. So, you are your favorite character in Dallas, the television role-playing game. And as far as I could tell, you actually play one of the characters from the show. Um, and it's weird. Let's, let's say it's weird, but let's, let's open her up from the original vintage shrink wrap uh, and take a look. And it is in, it, it, the packaging that this thing arrived in was truly spectacularly half-assed, um, but it, it has arrived safely. Um, and it is in beautiful condition, unplayed, remarkably enough. So, it is in uh, what I would refer to as SPI's standard uh, one-inch box, which they produce many war games in. Um, it is, by modern standards, a very thin box, uh, and therefore a lot of these things have not survived to, to the present day. Um, we get two very tiny SPI standard dice. These were the Standard dice that SPI used for a lot of things, and we get uh, several things inside. So let's take a look. In addition to the dice, um, we get a book of major characters, and these are also perforated. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to rip these apart, since it's. It, it would be an interesting exercise, I think, to actually try to play this thing. These are perforated right here, so they're they're actually kind of stuck together in the 40 years, 42 years, since the production of this thing. So you can see that we have all of the... Now, I, I, rem I mean, I remember Dallas as a kid, the, the show Dallas as a kid. And I thought it was particularly interesting uh, because of JR's hat. Um, so, you know, because when you're nine years old, that's the kind of thing that makes you cool, is, is a cool hat. And I, I think we must agree that, that Larry Hagman, in fact, is wearing a cool hat on the show. So, we get this booklet of, I don't know, what, okay, 16 pages or so, uh, of perforated, pre-generated characters, which includes all the characters from the show, like a lot of characters, um, and this... Major characters, information for the director, and players' rules outline. Um, and then play proceeds in episodes. And there's a book of... Well, there are somewhere in here. There's episodes. Um, so this booklet here contains... And this booklet is on uh, pretty thick SPI stock. Um, I actually kind of feel like... It's pretty deluxe presentation for for the day and for SPI. This booklet is on quite thin paper, uh, and again, James Dunnigan designed the legendary war game designer James F. Dunnigan. And in here we have the the various scripts, and we have three scripts, I think. So you complete rules of play. Whether we would consider this a role playing game uh, nowadays, or frankly, even in 1980, if you knew what a role-playing game was, is a matter of some debate, shall we say. Um, so, but let's assume that for a moment that it is, in fact, a role-playing game, and if so, then the complete rules of play fit on less than six pages, which is, by itself, on the face of it, kind of remarkable. So, I think you get setups for the individual characters. So you have script number one, and these are basically adventures, for the lack of a better term. 
Uh, here's a second one, Sweet Oil. Here's a third one, Down Along the Coast. I, I don't really remember much about what was actually happening in the show. Um, and there's a saddlebag of Krugerans. Uh, there's also a script writer's guide, including director's notes, script writer's notes, plot devices, minor character biographies, Dallas background, and a sample scene. Okay. So this contains uh, director's notes. I... I assume the director to be the game master or referee, how to write your own game scripts, plot devices, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, number 13, piece of valuable diplomatic information picked up from foreign oil industry contact, used to reveal one secret card. Okay, here's character biographies for my, what I assume to be the minor, you know, the non-major player characters. Uh, here is a background um, and here is a background on Texas politics. It might be fun to read this nowadays. And then here is a sample scene. And if we go back to the um, the the scripts that we have here, these are set up in scenes. So scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five. Okay. And then we have a whole bunch of cards here. Uh, we also have an SPI info flyer, which contains um, such gems as Empires of the Middle Ages and War of the Ring and Dragon Quest. Um, and interesting that they bundled this thing in with their sci-fi and fantasy games. On the back side, we have Ares Magazine, and you can, of course, subscribe to Strategy and Tactics for five years for $69. Seems like a hell of a bargain, except that uh, SPI would be out of business uh, in about two years after this. So, those of us who remember Freedom in the Galaxy will find these cards extremely familiar. These are uh, on these kind of cards that you kind of cut out of the sheets. So they're super thin and flimsy and they will wear very poorly. Uh, but these look like identical stylistically to the cards in Freedom in the Galaxy, which, you know, again, Redmond Day Simonson graphic design. So that's probably not much of a surprise. Um, so, and there's... Ugh, I'm not even going to count them, but there's, I don't know, 30 or 40 of these uh, of these cards. And there's clearly three different kinds of cards. Uh, there's these minor character cards. And they even give you blank minor character cards that you could fill out by yourself. Um, and then we have these things, which are organizational characters. Some of which are like the Texas Rangers or the Texas Railroad Commission or the local police. And there's one of those that's blank. Um, and then we have these cards, which I are, are some plot devices or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. So whether I, I, so I, I, I cannot in good conscience recommend that you should go run down at great expense a copy of Dallas the television role-playing game. It is a, a curious artifact, if nothing else. Um, and I only did buy it because it is such a weird thing and I kind of wanted to see the inside of it um, and having seen the inside of it yeah it's a weird thing um, so <laughs> I, again it's it, it looks interesting in from like a game design standpoint I, I'd like to kind of give it a read and kind of try to get a sense of what the designer was trying to accomplish with this thing. Um, I, I, what I, what it looks like we have is kind of a weird story game hybrid that isn't quite a role-playing game in the conventional sense, but if we use that term a little more broadly, then I, I think, yeah, it does in fact meet that goal. I mean, I'm making some assumptions here based on what I see, um, and it's certainly an exceptionally unconventional product, let us say. So, hopefully you have found this video amusing. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do help support the channel so that we can continue to bring you wacky shit such as this. I would especially like to thank the patrons of Ardwolf's Lair who enable me to make a whole lot of different kinds of content and none of whose money went into purchasing Dallas the television role-playing game. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.